working on a good quality Scotch return to boiler part four, rubbing down the first coat of varnish and applying a second coat, painting the chimney mounting, plus making thread adapters for the water gauge. For the initial rubbing down of the mahogany cladding, I used 180 grit, quite coarse emery cloth. Now I'm using 400 grade wetter dry sandpaper and as you can see I'm using it dry which clogs up the wetter dry sandpaper so I change the piece of sandpaper frequently and in no time at all the boiler cladding is feeling quite smooth. Like most of the jobs in this hobby this takes quite a while to complete and you need plenty of patience. Eventually I get the wood to a standard that is fine for the next coat. And as usual, this is the varnish that I use. Please note, it is not the water-based varnish. This is the smelly stuff that I'm sure isn't good for me or the planet, but it makes a great job of the boiler cladding. Once I tried the water-based polyurethane varnish, but I didn't like it. On subsequent overcoats, it started to look milky. So I'm sticking to the stuff that I know works and stays like this for a long time. You will notice that I'm not applying a massive thick coat of varnish, I sort of wipe it on and wipe it off. And eventually it looks like this. I will probably give the boiler another coat of varnish. I'll wait and see what it looks like when it's dried. This is the return tube chimney mounting and it needs painting. The first thing I'm doing though is removing this fitting. This is the exhaust pipe and it goes almost to the top of the chimney. Because I'm using a gas burner, I do not want a blast pipe effect to draw the fire. Before painting this return tube chimney housing, I need to rub it down to get it smooth. I'm not going mad here, this is a casting so it's not very smooth to start with. But the least I can do is sand it down a bit to key it for the next coat of paint. After finishing sanding the part, I took it into the outer part of the workshop and sprayed it using some HMG satin black paint. First of all I sprayed the inside bit, then I turned it over to do the outside. The part is currently sat on a plastic box on my turntable which makes it very easy to rotate for the painting job. And the reason I'm doing this was a viewer suggested it and I'd never thought of it so now I'm always going to use this turntable for painting. After finishing the chimney I sprayed some of this aerosol paint into a can cap because I want to paint the boiler with a paintbrush. And this is for two reasons. The paintwork got a bit damaged by fitting the mahogany strip and sanding it down. Plus, I really hate to see spray painted boilers if I'm honest. Have a look at a full size steam boiler, you will see that it's normally just painted with black paint. And often over the surface rust as well. On this boiler the smoke box door and the back head have been sprayed, but other parts are going to be brush painted. I'm brush painting here using HMG satin black, which once it's dried will look very good. Now I have a situation where the paint is wet and the varnish is wet, so I'm going to do something else. A few weeks ago from Blackgates Engineering I bought this. It's a left hand quarter by 40 water gauge. A really good quality left hand quarter by 40 water gauge. The quarter by 40 by the way refers to the thread that goes into the boiler, but unfortunately the thread in this boiler is 5 sixteenths by 32. You may be thinking, why has this idiot bought a quarter by 40 water gauge to fit in a hole which is clearly 5 sixteenths by 32? There are two very valid reasons for this. The first one being Blackgates Engineering did not have a 5 sixteenths by 32 version of this water gauge. And the second reason is I will now be able to show viewers how to make thread adapters, specifically for these most excellent water gauges. These water gauges are made from bronze and use a thread insert. This makes it possible to use one of these type of water gauges on most of the small threads. For instance, quarter by 40 threads per inch or 32 threads per inch, 3 sixteenths by 32 or 40 threads per inch, and in my case, 5 sixteenths by 32. As you can see, all I did was clamp the original thread in the Myford's chuck. Then as usual, I used my small back or spanner to break the seal on the thread, then I just wound the fitting off the thread and I ended up with this. The hole in this fitting is threaded 7 seconds of an inch by 40 threads per inch. And here is a die of the same dimensions. And just to check I'm screwing the original thread adapter into the die to make sure it definitely is 7 seconds by 40 threads per inch. 
and as you can see in this clip, it definitely is the right thread. To make thread inserts for this really high quality water gauge, I thought for a change I wouldn't use brass. This I think is alum bronze. It's really hard stuff. In retrospect, I would have been better using just an ordinary piece of phosphor bronze bar, but I've had this bar for ages and it's not too far off the size I need it to be. I think that one more cut should take this down to 5 16 of an inch. You can see clearly that it's not brass, just by the way the chippings are coming off. I took the final fine cut and when I tested it at the end, it was definitely 5 16 of an inch in diameter. The only problem with this material is it is very hard and very slippery and I could physically see it moving out of the way of the tool because the tool isn't very sharp. But I got there in the end and here's the micrometer clamped onto the work. This part of the bar is exactly 5 16 of an inch in diameter. Time now to thread it. A bit of cutting lubricant first. I tried threading this piece of alum bronze by hand but it was too difficult. So I engaged back gear and here I'm cutting the thread. I had to keep stopping and reversing the lathe though because the part was just spinning round in the chuck. But after doing this a few times I finally got a thread all the way down the piece of bar and it was a good thread, very very clean and what's more important, accurate. When I screwed on a brass 5 16 by 32 nut it was a perfect fit. The next part of the job involves turning the end down to 7 seconds of an inch, so I can thread this 7 seconds by 40. You will notice that I've drilled a hole down the centre. It's always a good idea when you make thread inserts to make sure that you have a hole down the centre. The smaller diameter of the end part, and also the fact that I'm threading it 7 seconds by 40 threads per inch, made it very straightforward and I did it by hand. The original part that I'm copying had a chamfer on the end and here I'm reproducing that on my new part. I decided to part it off using a very thin parting tool just because I thought it would put less pressure on the work. The only trouble with very thin parting tools when they're under pressure is they do not cut perfectly straight as you can see the end of this is rounded. That's probably due to the end of the parting tool being ground at a slight angle. The final part of this video is a test fit of the thread adapters that I've made for these excellent water gauge fittings. And as you can clearly see, the fit is absolutely perfect. No shake, rattle or roll. I'm not going to permanently fit the water gauge yet because I have other things to do before that. When I tightened up the water gauge fittings, they were almost in the right place. The bottom one just needs the thinnest of shim washers. I'll be doing all that in another episode. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.